so much for coming so early to be here and to listen to us. Um, my name is Ipatia and this is Gigi and uh, we're just going to <coughs> jump in because I think um, the it will introduce itself, the work. So thank you and here we go. <laughs> this is the third time we present Civic Zones. Civic Zones is a research project uh, that we Began, that began the summer of 2011. It is not a piece about the crisis, it is not a piece representing the crisis, and most certainly not inspired by it. Civic Zones is a project that wants to share a dialogue, an urgency between us, and an urgency we feel the need to share with others, with you today. A debt, perhaps, as Harney and Morton might call it. Civic Zones seeks to invite and explore abandoned, discarded, discontinuous practices of the past and question how can they form our current everyday action. Civic Zones was firstly presented in October 2012 and later in April 2013. For each manifestation, we reworked the material in relation to the context, but most crucially, the work was affected by other events taking place at the same time. In what follows today, you might see traces of the other manifestations and other times, traces of other events and people. This assembly of traces, of events, of failures, of discontinuous practices and struggles can only function for us as a way of orientating ourselves in the here and now as an act of common wayfinding. We hear a lot about common, commons these days. In the commons seems to be the solution for many. How, when and where do we find ourselves in a common place? And for how long? With whom? Isn't that common is also fugitive? The unsettling, the uneasy, the broken and the uncommon found in moment and places, and then lost again. What are the repeated practices that institute a common by resisting repeated and normative practices that foreclose any possibilities for new kinds of commons and institutions? Need and make, as Gayatri Spivak once told us when she visited us in Athens. We talk to each other because we must. We need and make. So let us begin our dialogue on the notion of dialogue as theory and practice. In other words, a dialogue on dialogue. Our dialogue precedes this event, therefore it is not this gathering that initiates and produces it, but rather an already existing and ongoing dialogue that brings us here today. We feel this is an important point to make in order to point to how dialogue assumes certain forms through and across convergences, transitions, flows, resonances, and occupancies, that our dialogue in itself gives rise to forms. If we were to deconstruct the Greek word dialogos, we find that the emphasis is on the space in between the respective discourses shared. So therefore, the circulation of knowledge 
echoes recent attempts at dialogic horizontalism in the assemblies of global social movements and other social face-to-face -face gatherings with a desire to share and discuss by way of an assembly of presences. What we will present to you today can be seen as an assembly of presences that seek to find ourselves and each other as we try to figure out where are we now, what now. As we still try to find each other, ourselves, together, here today, we start by looking back, and so to travel to a moment of our dialogue in the past. May 26, 2012. Dear Gigi, I was thinking of Butler's essay when she talks about tracking radical change. Do you think this might be good for our video through Athens? And then I was thinking of direct action. Perhaps we should take out the barbed wire around the community garden in Siri. Also, what would you think of setting up a questionnaire to different people regarding the mapping of radical change? Here is the title issue that Butler's sentence is in. Kisses, Ipatia. May 27th, 2012. Dear Ipatia, thanks, interesting. So she actually says that the map of radical change is when we target here that and there something else, so not one unified demand. So what if we ask people to locate and describe the one place of radical change that existed in the past, a concrete space, and one imaginary description of an action or a place to be materialized? So we attempt to really make a map of radical change a beast of historiography and imagination. Kisses in that soon. As we attempt to find ways to speak, whether in our personal correspondence or in occupied squares, theatres, assemblies, I sense that in the heart of Giorgio Agamben's notion of communicability as a gestural capacity is the tremoring of potentiality. The improvised and impromptu assembly at Sindarma and the hundreds of neighborhood assemblies it has subsequently discharged are performances of agoraphilia, crucial and inevitable moments and spaces that offer us ways to practice communication and communion as we still search for language. We must refuse complacency and compromise when these ruptures and breaks present themselves to us only to demand further constitution through and by us. If we are still to search for, to cite Moton, citing Mackey, quote, new words, new worlds, end quote. These practices of communication and communion require space. As David Harvey pointed out, building on a firth, capital survives through the production of space. So therefore, we have to confront capital through the production of space, that city life is the subject and not just the site of anti-capitalist struggle. On the 11th of November 2011, Mavili Collective, a group of artists and theatre makers, occupied the disused building of Ambrose Theatre in Athens. The occupancy installed itself as a reactivation and proposed initially an intense 12-day program of activities bringing together artists, theoreticians, dance, theatre makers, architects, and the general public. As Mavili Collective stated in their manifesto that was sent to the press and to the public, quote, we aim to reactivate and reoccupy the space temporarily with our own means and propose an alternative model of collective management. For the next 11 days, Mavili will reconstitute and grow as a public space for exchange, research, debate, meeting and thinking. We act in response to the general stagnation of thinking and action in our society through collective and direct action by reactivating a disused historical building in the center of Athens. On October the 5th, 2012, ETAV, a new company responsible to sell national assets, sends a letter to the police station and mobile collective. Our company is going to immediately capitalize the space we demand the collective to evacuate the space as our company has a potential theatre group to rent and we need to visit the space. Despite 2,000 signature support, letters uh, 
by the company and the inhabitants press, media, international messages of support and in an initial contact with the Ministry of Culture at our replies. We are particularly sensitive to the requests from groups, citizens and inhabitants, but our company has to privatize public buildings according to the common interest of the citizens. In Black Marxism, Cedric Robinson writes how freedom is mobility. Every aspect of social life is entwined with the historical criminality of mobility, of freedom. Every social interaction is shaped by and affected by a history in which to be free is to be criminal. A request was sent to the Ministry of Culture to intervene and begin of an extension of time so a potential dialogue could begin since the Ministry of Culture has been unable to fund any cultural activities for, for, for over four years. This potential dialogue ended with Minister is informed he will not intervene. We will apply legality. How to begin to negotiate with these laws that are violently perpetrated in the name of the common interests of the citizens, the historical criminality of freedom? I Want to Be Ready is the title of performance study scholar Daniel Goldman's book on improvised dance as a practice of freedom. She, ask, she asks who moves, who doesn't, and argues that improvisation is a constant negotiation with swifting tight places, with constraints created by power relations, social norms, aesthetic traditions, etc. Improvisation is not the understanding of freedom as a desire end point devoid of constraints. Practices of freedom are sped up imaginative expressive negotiations with constraints that define improvisation's political potential. Daniel Goldman also writes of the care of the self that is necessary for practices of freedom, that these practices, quote, involve an ongoing stylization of the self where one both respects the constraints of reality and tries to violate them, end quote. Arguing that Foucault's notion of practices of freedom that he opposes to facile and easy understandings of liberation resemble practices of improvised dance. And Goldman quotes him, quote, if we are not settled for the affirmation or the empty dream, it seems to me that this attitude must be an experimental one. I mean that this work done at the limits of ourselves must put itself to a test of reality, of contemporary reality, to grasp the points where change is possible and desirable. In the summer of 2012, as Athens awaits another loan installment from the IMF, ECB, and European Commission, brace itself against the implementation of a new set of austerity measures and sees an alarming growing new Nazi faction violently patrol its street, we set off on a walk through the dilapidated center of Athens, armed with a masking tape, a marker pen, and a camera. We begin from the occupied theater in Bros, heading in no particular direction, get lost, marking abandoned spaces with the words potential and its equivalent in Greek and the name. As urban impoverishment deepens, empty spaces proliferate. Yellow and red signs for to rent and for sale dizzyingly multiply throughout our cityscape. We dream these empty spaces be given life through constituent imagination and actions. Scrolling on them, we call out for their transformation. These dreams emerge and erupt out of moments and movement of walking and posing and murmuring together. It is the city that recounts for us what and where its possibilities are and glide. glide. Thoughts emerge from these becomings, these streets and walls, from singular and social movements within spaces and channels, from our motions. We mark this location in the center of Athens and on a visual um, <coughs> map, and we will be developing more of this tracing in an ongoing open source collective project. project. We are following Jose Munoz when he writes that, quote, affective and cognitive ma maps of the world that a critically queer utopianism can create need to be attended to in a, fun in a fashion that resembles a kind of politicized cruising, end quote. We opened up these attempts at radical mapping and mapping radicality in order to reveal what Tim Ingold calls a wayfinding, 
sending a questionnaire to activists, artists, academics, friends, and everyday insurgents around the world. This is the letter. Quote, so if we do not stay in the same place, it is not to be lamented. If we are not, if we are on the move, then we are in collective forms, tracking the sites of injustice and inequality, and our trail becomes the new map of radical change. End quote, Judith Butler, 2012. Dear reader, this is a personal invitation to contribute to a project that seeks to construct collective research. We are interested in what militant research can potentially do. With your help, this project wishes to track radical change. If you would like to contribute, please answer all or at least one of the following questions. One, a short account of a practice, place, or event from your living memory that personally functioned <coughs> as an agent of change for you. Describe the place and what happened there that produces knowledge that can act as a tool in attempting to map a trail of radical change in the present. If possible, please also include an image and the coordinates or exact location. Two, share a present practice or place that you feel currently acts for you as an agent of radical change. If possible, please include a relevant image or text and location. Three, finally, share with us potential future practices, methods, specific location that we imagine to occupy space for you on this trail towards radical change. And these are the some of the responses that we received. Jackie Abuliam, present. The government has declared war on anything and everything different. The police have turned Athens into a hunting ground. Golden Dawn is now a political party in parliament. Every day foreigners are being assaulted openly. Day by day we are made to feel unwanted. A day does not go by where I do not ask myself, could this really be? Can this really be happening here in the 21st century in a democratic European country? Can I really be witnessing and living scenes that I've only read about in history books, never imagining that years later I just might be living those scenes? I thought I was safe, but history really does repeat itself, so it seems. I've decided to go beyond that, we as a people are beyond that. Injustice is not something we shall tolerate in these days and times. Racism is not something we shall tolerate in these days and times. Police brutality is not something we shall tolerate in these days and times. Oppression is not something we shall tolerate in these days and times. Something is brewing in the streets of Athens. It started with Greeks themselves declaring they've had enough and now that declaration has passed on to the foreigners, the immigrants, the different. There is an atmosphere of urgency amongst us. I can feel it too, I am part of it too. Meetings are taking place in various locations. African communities, organizations are coming together. I've attended a few so far. It's a beautiful sight to see my fellow Africans coming together, even speaking Greek amongst each other discussing, strategizing, planning, how what must we combat this open war on foreigners? Fear can be an agent of radical change, for it is fear that has brought us together. Now that we are being treated, targeted openly, assaulted daily, now is when we are finally coming together as one with no option than to fight back. For we are beyond such injustice, we are beyond police brutality, we are beyond oppression, and we are most defiantly beyond racism. Location, center of Athens. Pedekirk passed. The week before, the class had played, and the ballroom at the end of the pier had been lamped, too hot to breathe. For some reason, the promoters thought that the lurkers would draw as a big crowd this week, so they had turned the heating off. 30 of us were squeezed up tight to each other and the stage, poor going for warmth. Even the one armed bouncer seemed to have a bit of compassion for us. 
It was somewhere towards the end of the gig. I know this because the lurkers were playing their biggest hit. And then I kiss her. When it began, one of us got on stage, and for the first time ever, the one-armed bouncer let it pass. So soon, he was joined by another and another. And somewhere along the way, one of the girls was playing air guitar by the guitarist, so he took off his fender and slammed it over her shoulders for her to play. More of us were coming on stage now. The drummer handed over one stick and then another. The bassist was the last to leave. Over about 10 minutes, we had changed places. The 30 of us now on stage playing, and then I kiss her, and then I, while the four members of the band stood in the hall watching us, their breath visible in the cold air. Over about 10 minutes, we changed places once again, and without any break in the song, which had now become an extended jam. The performance and audience found themselves back in the usual places, but no longer that is how things should be. Location, Hastings Spear. Mandy Megas passed. In 2008, when my Palestinian friend Omar Barghout gave me the book, The Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Location, Morocco. Alexandra Kiritsis, Future. A process able to infiltrate into educational system, incorporate experience as a form of knowledge acquisition. Location, Europe. Christina Katsari, Past. Okay, for me a very important place was Club Bigasos at Exarchia. It was tiny and active during the 80s. There was the meeting point of the punk new wave. I listened to discussions, learned music, read the first comic books in Greece. Outside there were often notorious fights with skinheads and Mohicans. It was also the time that the chemistry school was squatted and barricades of the law school. I can get some photos. The space was demolished and is now a block of flats. Location, Athens, Tilemaco Street, behind the Calidrumi police station. René Jackson and Audrey Dahl. We are PhD students and this is our initial account of the student strike that took place in our department starting March 6, 2012. Atas is an image of the hallway where our strike headquarters were located. We like the metaphor of an empty, hall, uh, empty hallway. Department of Education, room LB 579, Montreal, Quebec. Irini Efsathiu, present, future. Seriously, Ambros and spaces like it. Location, Europe. Costas Venetis, past. Some 11 years ago in Italy during the anti G8 protest. Military vehicles with their cannons armed are directed to us were guarding the way out of the square. It was a promise. A lot of rather naive young Europeans changed their point of view those days. We are at war. It's not a game. Location, Genova. These were just some of the responses that we've received so far. Dialogue stretching across the globe. And you yourselves are invited to contribute. We have the letter here, and we would be very um, happy and grateful if you would also tell us about spaces or experiences of radical change that you have experienced or imagined. Um, and uh, you can please take one afterwards. Um, so <clears throat> now we return back to our own dialogue. February 27th, 2013. Dear Gigi, for me now, it has become, if an action is taking place in Ambrose, and it makes this a radical one because it's taking place in an occupied illegal space, now the question is how do we move in reverse, extending this radicalness towards a larger public sphere, outwards, through specific gestures, moves, practices, art making art, meeting others, finding others, joining forces, it's so much bigger than just what we're doing here. It's about how we live our lives, what we fight for, how we cruise utopia, what we do from now on. Love. February 28th, date 2013. Dear Patia, as you and Danielle said, freedom is negotiation with constraints, 
and unfortunately, I don't think that it's easy to define the radical act today. I feel everything around us aiming towards concrete positions. I don't think an occupation or a demonstration is a radical act. It can be as compromised as going to work every morning. I think we should think more of what radical act produces, and then we can start thinking of its effect and future potential. My ideas of radicality have changed during those months. I think we are in a period of time that the radical is operating in some gray zones, and our job is to constantly, and when I say constantly, I mean every hour, every day, negotiate with potential dangers and find a new position again and again. There is no place, no ideology to support, not one radical gesture, because nothing is safe. Love, Gigi. March 28th. 2013. Dear Gigi, I was thinking that we could think of moving from the term potentiality to actuality. I get the notion from Bruno Postil's The Actuality of Communism. Anyways, I think that these terms can be thought of together as well. How potentiality is dependent on the actuality of the here and now, and how we care for it. Love. Mars, March 30th, 2013. We repeat, we repeat again and again the same forms, but when can we imagine new ones? There is something about imagination and actuality. I remember that during the festival, Where Are We Now?, seen as Moscorou, a collaboration among, amongst dance collectives and groups, presented a piece under the title Where I Was, Where I Am. Dancers, choreographers, performance makers were invited to contribute a short video from an old piece of work. On stage, there were two mics, and two signs, one saying then and another one now. Choreographers moved from the then of the old video to the now so as to orientate themselves. Where am I? Trying to make sense of environment, of themselves. Where are we now? And who are we now? And then I remember Stefano Hani in a recent lecture referred to the sit slaves as the one that have no subjectivity. They are pre-subject that this lack of subjecthood is the places where resistance could emerge. Performance as the resistance of the object, as Fred Morton put it. As we find ourselves in a moment where everything around us is in constant flux, collapsing, we try to orientate ourselves, to wayfind, and we keep asking, where are we now? Not only as a question of orientation, but also of not knowing what our subjectivity is anymore. Subject to whom? For what? Survival, struggle, love, giddy. What struggles teach us, such as anti-racist struggles or anti-colonial struggles, is that freedom is a constant struggle, an insistence. And so we think of the commons as a constant struggle, as a resistance to main channels, as a resistance to institutions, as a set of repeated practices. What could be the new practices to be repeated in difference that in turn produce new institutions? How do we enable continuity? As Michael Hart asks, the challenges of keeping the continuity of the beauty and joy of the occupied squares and protests. How? What for? What is the usage of common good? And the how? And then, how then do we think of debt as a good thing? For example, I'm indebted to Gigi. I'm indebted to Michel Foucault. I'm indebted to Nina Simone. We refuse bad debt. We are unsettled, ruptured, constantly struggling to refuse capture and complacency, refusing subjectivity by embracing objecthood as resistance. We dream and take strength because what these resistances throughout so many places across the world the last few years, as Costas Duzinas shared with us the other day, what they will share are some common characteristics. Enough is enough and an uneasiness. And their specific and shared conditions of production, constraints, and endurance reveal how in Avery Gordon words, utopia exists as more than a haunt. And now for traces of calls that haunt us and exist as more than just haunts from the streets of Athens. Quoting Avery Gordon on Utopia, it exists where there is no painful split between the dream world and the real world, where evolutionary time doesn't stop the world, but it rather is a daily part of it, where needs and desires 
and investments are already being re-engineered. It exists when the utopian is not the future as some absolute break from the past and the present, but a way of living in the here and now. It is the articulation of social movement in the general sense of the term, the ongoing building of an alternative civilization with its own reason, its own home, its own system of value. The resistances that Cosa spoke to on Friday and the new and different repeated practices that create new subjects and thus institutions are avowals to be consciously haunted by the specter of utopia that is here, present. Utopia exists as more than a haunt because it is as socially real as feeling as the material performances and traces that summon them into existence. We have a dream, we trace them, we speak them, perform them, we dream awake. We walk, we talk, but we do that with a sense of the actuality of tight places, wayfinding, finding each other and mapping these findings, care of self, care of others, finding each other as of for radical change, practice. We arrive at many junctions and look around. Elusive horizons can only be potential revelations if and when and on the condition we keep on reading, dialoguing, moving, improvising, altering terrains. The moves, these moves are in, imbued with a sense that, as Jose Munoz writes, we are not yet here, and we f hope, strive, and fugitively stretch towards horizons of possibility. Thank you. Thank you. Time for discussion or questions. Thank you. So thank you for your work and life. And um, my question would be: um, Do you think uh, the movement is increasing, getting stronger, or getting tired, or? What, what do you think about your future? Could it be new institutions or something of duration? Do you, do you know what I mean? So there might be a feeling of coming, but um, you have to get it in a form of duration. And um, yes. could it be? Yes, this, this is um, what we, we were, we've been thinking through a lot of, because this project also changes all the time. Uh, this is the third time we've done it, and, and a lot of things that we might have... Um, we're rethinking things all the time as, as things change. But yes, this is the question that we pose towards the end, this, this idea of continuity, and I think that it's something that's shared a lot in, in all of these uh, um, social movements that have taken part in, that have taken place in the last few years. For example, um, uh, the, this, this question of continuity that I mentioned Michael Hart was thinking through it was in re relation to um, a talk he was giving to the Occupy Gezi members in Istanbul and, but this is a question that, that I know that um, a lot of us feel from Sindama to New York and wherever these places is how do we keep that initial um, moment alive and continuous um, what I would argue, though, against those who say that these things have moved, have failed, is that um, perhaps the squares may not be occupied, and um, so you, you don't have this spectacular kind of uh, um, sense, the, the, the spectacle of, of the gathering. But there have been a lot of uh, um, material and uh, uh, changes and effects that were produced by those moments. And these things happen in a less visible way, but they're happening. So for, just for example, in New York, for example, the people who were involved with the Occupy, they're helping a lot with the cancellation of student debt through different efforts. They also help with uh, the um, aftermath of the Hurricane Sandy. They helped a lot of people and also 
with uh, evictions. And I know that the same thing is happening in Spain. Uh, the same thing is happening in Greece in the sense that a lot of neighborhood assemblies now function as a result of the initial occupation of Sindama. And it goes on and on. So, uh, But this is, this is definitely a huge question of us because it's about um, if institutions are a set of repeated practices that produce meaning, how it's not simple enough to talk about a common, you know, because we have to change the way that our, sub- our own subjectivities are formed by that, by those forces that we actually are trying to fight against. So we're all produced by them. It's not as if we're outside of it. So how do we, how do we um, engage in new forms of of practices? And this is where performance, I think, is come is very important. How do we experiment in new practices to actually instead? have more effective change or create new institutions. But it's, of course, a huge question. I think it's a daily practice, I think. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you for for having us. (laughs) We will continue here in a moment with a presentation on protest and sarcasm.